Hello everyone, in this short series of videos, I am going to show you how to deploy the virtual application services engine alongside the multi-site orchestrator. Not sure if you knew, but we recently announced what is called the application services engine, and its whole purpose is to be a dedicated repository where you can install all kinds of related applications that can work with your ACI fabric. Things like Network Insights, which is part of our Day 2 operation stack, in the future will have the ability to install Network Assurance Engine. But more importantly, and what I will show in these, uh, these videos, is installing the multi-site orchestrator on top of the services engine. The application services engine actually comes in a couple of different form factors. Now, normally you'd want the physical uh, cluster of the services engines, and that would be the hardware that you would use going forward to install all kinds of things, like I mentioned, Network Insights, MSO. Uh, but not sure if you knew that we also have a virtual version of the services engine. I'll call it the VASE. And on top of that virtual services engine, you could install a new version or a new format of the multi-site orchestrator that's optimized for this kind of deployment. There are other possibilities around the virtual or cloud-based services engine. I am not going to talk about that in this video. What I'm going to focus on here is just using the virtual services engine that you can download from CCO and installing MSO as an application on top of that. Now, obviously, there's a couple of uh, things you need to do before you get started. First, we need to go to CCO and download the OVA for the services engine. You can see I've highlighted the version here that works with VMware. We also support KVM as well. Next thing you need to do is you need to point your web browser to dcappcenter.cisco.com and grab the multi-site orchestrator application from this website. I just want to make it clear this is different from the MSO OVA that you may have downloaded in the past to install the multi-site orchestrator. This will be MSO.ACI because it is an ACI application running on top of the services engine. Now there's a couple of things you're going to need to have ahead of time. Each of the virtual ASE nodes requires an out-of-band IP address, access to basic services like NTP and DNS. Obviously, you need to have a port group ready to go in a vSwitch or a DVS for these guys to connect. Uh, double check that you have enough CPU memory and storage wherever you're going to install these. And I've basically listed the requirements on a per node basis of what you'll need to have. And then finally, we need to make up a serial number for each of the nodes, and that will become important when we actually deploy the OVA of the services engine. And I gave you an example here that I made up. You can make up your own, but Cisco SN010203 for my three nodes. Now, the general order of operation is this. We're going to deploy the virtual ASC in a cluster of three. You're always going to want to have three. So we're going to deploy the very first node in vCenter, we're going to complete the, the, the whole installation. We're going to power it on. And then we're going to log in with the only account we can log in with, which is called Rescue User. And then we're going to get what's called a DBG token. We need to copy this token because we're going to need it to deploy the second and third nodes in the virtual ASE cluster. So once we have that token, we can go and deploy those things. And I'll show you how that works. Once we deploy all three uh, virtual ASEs, we'll double check that the cluster is formed and is healthy, and I'll show you how to do that. Then we're going to copy the MSO.ACI app that we downloaded just before, and then we're going to install it and enable it, and then we'll be done. It's also important to, uh, to read the install guides. Now, everything I show you in these videos is basically following what I learned from these install guides. Uh, so just make sure that you read them and you, and you understand them. And I've just given you the terms that you can search for, the URLs for are too long. Okay, let's actually do this for real on a live uh, installation. Okay, here I am logged into my vCenter and I've got everything downloaded and ready to go. So this is going to be a pretty straightforward deployment of a typical OVA. So I'm going to right click and deploy an OVF template. Go ahead and select the file uh, that I need to do. This is the file that I downloaded from CCO, the virtual uh, ASE. Go ahead and click next. A lot of this stuff is pretty straightforward. So we're going to go ahead and give it a name. Um, you pick the ESX host that you want to deploy this on and click Next. It'll do a quick validation. Just make sure you have enough vCPU, etc. If you don't, it will actually tell you. And I learned this the hard way. Once it validates, you can review the details and click Next. 
Here we're going to have to select storage. Now the install guide says that you should use thick provisioned. I noticed that if you install on local drives, it'll choose thick provisioned. If you install on a remote data store, it will only give you the option of thin provisioned. Both have worked for me. So if this is a lab install, just go ahead and pick whatever works for you. But if it's a production installation, you should probably go with the thick provisioned per the install guides instructions. In this stage, we're going to need to ex uh, establish the port group that the out-of-band management connection for each node will connect to. This is where the real work begins, is customizing the template. Now, there are a number of values that need to be correct. Let me say that they need to be correct and in the correct format, or the virtual ASE will not install properly. So I'm, I'm saving you time because I learned this also the hard way. So as this is node number one, we're going to make it node number one. Remember, we're going to do three nodes in total. We need to give a serial number for the node. And if you remember, we need to make up the serial number. So for node one, I'm going to call it Cisco SN01 for node number two, 02 and 03, etc. We're going to need to give it just a standard host name. It doesn't really matter what this host name is. It's just for your purposes. We need to have a rescue user password. Now, I believe the password has to be at least 15 characters long, but it doesn't really tell you or check that. I just kind of learned that the hard way. So I'm just uh, going to make a, a, a password. In this case, I just used Cisco123, Cisco123, and that seems to work for me. But obviously, you'll pick one that works for you. You don't have to follow me. Uh, we're going to give it a domain name, in my case, Cisco.com. Sorry, quick edit. After posting this video, I uh, discovered a small misconfiguration that was causing problems for me and I wanted to let you know about it. When it comes to selecting the domain name when you deploy your virtual uh, services engine, don't set your organization's root domain name. Just set something else like case.local or node.local. Just set it to something that's not your base domain. This has to do with once you deploy the MSO application, uh, and how the Kubernetes cluster works and forwards DNS, it could cause an issue where lookup fails. So just set it to, to anything but your root domain. Now, on the network configuration, this is where we need to assign the IP addresses that I mentioned we needed ahead of time. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. And you need to have a mask and default gateway. Now, these application overlay subnets, service IP subnets, just go ahead and leave the defaults. You don't need to really mess with these. Uh, that's just going to keep on going down the list. We're going to need access to an NTP server and a DNS server, so I'll put those in. So those are in. Uh, and then uh, a domain search list. Again, whatever works for your uh, whatever works for your DNS domain. Now, the next question is, is is this node the first master? And yes, this is the first node. So this is the, the first uh, cluster. There's, they're all going to be masters, but this is the first master in the series. This section right here is the most important section, and you need to get it right, or it won't deploy correctly, and you'll never know what went wrong. So the, the install guide doesn't really mention this, and there is an error in the install guide. I repeat, there is a mistake in, this, in the install guide. And through trial and error, I figured out the, the, the proper way, and I want to share that with you. So it says, list the IPs and serial numbers of the peer nodes in the cluster separated by space. That's almost right. What they're really saying is, give me an IP, comma, serial number, followed by a space between the nodes. Now, that wasn't clear to me in the beginning, so I messed up, and I had to install this a few times. So I want to save you some time there. So if you remember, this is node 1. And its serial number is Cisco SN01. So what I need to do is I need to tell this node who its brother and sister nodes are in that format. So I've got the IPs already uh, picked out. And so I'm going to type them in here. So IP comma serial number of node number two, followed by a space, and then do that again for node number three. So Cisco SN03, and that is the proper way to do it. Now, the next thing here is it says enter the latest DBG token from the master node. If this is the first node, you can just go ahead and make something up, anything up. It only uh, That's only the case for the very first node because for the other two nodes, we'll need a real token. And I'll show you how to actually get that. So I'm just going to make up you know, something that will satisfy uh, the field. Uh, and then I'm going to click Next. Review your answers. Make sure everything matches as you expected. And go ahead and click Finish. 
Now you're gonna you're going to need to let this copy completely install, power it up, and then at that point I'll show you how to get the DBG token. So I'm gonna pause the video and come back when that's all done. Okay, at this point we have finished the install and we've powered up the OVA and I was able to ping it, which is a good sign. At this point, we just need to SSH into the console uh, as a rescue user to the IP address that we gave it. And the password that we're going to use is the password that you chose when you filled in all, the, all of the fields to deploy the OVA. So I'll go ahead and type that in. Here we are at the bash shell. The thing we need to type here is ACI Diag DBG token. And what that will do is it will give us a unique token for this node. You're gonna go ahead and need to copy this because we're gonna need this token when we deploy uh, node number two and node number three. Okay, switching back to vCenter, I've gone ahead and done all of the steps of deploying the second OVA node except the final step. Uh, it's exactly the same, just didn't wanna show you the same thing over and over again, but I just wanted to show you the properties of the second OVA uh, that we need to have correct. So obviously this is node number two, We've chosen a unique serial number, Cisco SN02. Uh, we put in a password. We also have a unique uh, management address, of course. Each one needs to be unique. Down here at the very bottom, uh, this is where we need to put the serial numbers and IP. Now notice, I'm gonna put the IP. Uh, this is from the point of view of node number two. So I'll put the IP of node number one, comma serial number, space, the IP of node number three, which we haven't deployed yet, but we will, and followed by a comma, and then the serial number. And then more importantly, at the very bottom, the very last question is, this is where you paste the real DBG token that we got from node one. Now, I'm not gonna show you deploying node number three. It's almost exactly the same, with the exception that the list of IP comma serial numbers will only reflect node number one and node number two if we're looking at it from the perspective of node number three. So when you next see me, I'll have all three nodes copied, installed, and powered on, and then we can check for the health of the cluster itself. Okay, so I've deployed all three OVAs, I've powered them on, and I am back in the console of the very first node, and I've been constantly issuing a command of ACI Diag space health. Now, this process does take a little bit of time, but I wanted to capture some of the different things that you might see as you go through. You might try in the very beginning and see that it says uh, cluster could not fetch config, cluster D is unhealthy. What that means, at least in my experience, is it doesn't see the other two nodes yet. They're still booting up and, and, and spinning up, which is normal at first. But after a little bit, you should uh, be able to issue the command and just see that I can fetch the config, but the cluster is unhealthy. Uh, then if you wait a little bit longer, you might see something like this where it says Docker is not running. K8 is unhealthy because at the background, these nodes are running a Kubernetes uh, installation. And then finally, you might see something like uh, nodes are not ready. K Kubernetes is still unhealthy. And then after a, a minute or two, you should issue the command and say ACI Diag Health, all components are healthy. This is the end state that you want to be at before you can install MSO. So I'm going to end this video here and in the very next video, which will be really short, I'll show you how to deploy the MSO.ACI app on top of our healthy cluster. Thank you.